there. So we should be just about to go live. For some reason, Facebook keeps defaulting to just me and I keep doing these recordings with just me. <laughs> but that's no good. So maybe, we should be live. that's what people prefer. Well, they, well, it's only me that sees it. <laughs> that's not a good thing. Awesome. So Tyson, welcome, welcome. And thank you so, so much for coming on and doing this call with me. I know that the value you're going to add is extraordinary. So I was very excited to have a chat with you. So um, first and foremost, I would love you to tell people that are listening, um, like who are you and who were you to who you've become now? So tell us a little bit about who you were and who you are now. Yeah, sure. So everyone who can't see my name down on the little screen, my name is Tyson Sharp. And who I was, I mean, I was a lost little puppy, just traveling, traveling around the world after university with no clue what I wanted to do, no direction, no yeah. passions, or, you know, nothing that I really wanted to move towards. And everyone can sort of resonate with the feeling of just being completely confused, completely lost, not knowing what they want to do. Um, who I am now, I'll skip the transition, but basically <laughs> who I am now, I run the serving circle. A lot of people yeah. know on, on, on Facebook, the community, and I've just built this absolute complete passion. And the reason being is because I, I started realizing that a lot of people have the challenge and the problem that society and cultural norms do not support people following their heart. Whenever they have a heart's calling and a gift they want to get out to the world to benefit in the world in the way that they're meant to be here, you know, society and cultural norms don't support that. They run into all the financial challenges, the challenges of what other people think, the challenges of know-how, how do I get my gift out there and make money doing it, right? So yes, there's yes. plenty of those challenges. And I developed a clear passion and a mission to solve those challenges for people. Awesome. And I know I'm a member of your serving circle and um, it's an awesome group. And you also have um, calls every Wednesday morning that where, you know, people come in and we talk about stuff and it's really a, a great place to be. And I know there's a lot of collaboration that comes out of that. So how did you build your groups and, and you know, get into the collaboration of getting other people to work with you? Yeah, a lot of people ask me this question because they're building their own groups yeah. and they want to not only grow, grow their group, but have it be engaged, right? Have yeah. it really start to engage. And yeah. the answer I give a lot of people of the reason that how it built into such a, a really engaging community was really around uh, the shift I had to make because... Yeah. I started doing a lot of meditation. We can go into it if you want, but really out of the meditation, I, I finished a two hour meditation in silence. And this voice just said, just fall in love with serving, grow this community and just fall in love with serving and everything else will take care of itself. Right. And this is in the moments when I had just transcended all these fears, doubts, worries about money, about business, about whatever. And I, uh, I just had that calling that said, just do this and, and trust. And yeah. so that's what I did. I started finding very, very unique ways of adding value and asking myself the question, how can, what do my, what do my community members need the most? How can I help them the most in the most efficient way, the most creative ways and, uh, and just focus on that. And that's really what you see today is the serving circle and everyone's starting to collaborate, do all these really yeah. cool things together yeah. is because of that insight, that sort of that, uh, that guidance that I got out of meditation. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm, I'm assuming there was a lot of work done before the meditation as well. We can't just sit there for two hours and go, yeah, I've got an idea. I get that. Cause there's, there's a lot of deep um, unpacking of yourself, but the message I'm getting is you have to change yourself first. You yeah. have to come from that space very much. So you said unique ways. What kind of, other than asking those questions, which of course is a great way to ask, how did you know that they the answers were the real answers? Uh, well, you never really know. I mean, what is a real answer, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never really know. It's all about, I just followed my heart, what felt, what felt most yeah. aligned, what felt most uh, exciting at the time. And then you just test and tweak. It's literally yeah. just saying, let's, let's do this. 
this feels most exciting for me. This feels like I'm, I'm listening to my audience. I'm listening to my community members. Uh, feels most exciting for me. Let's do it. And then test and tweak as we go. Right. Yeah. And awesome. because when you do that, especially when you follow your heart, you follow this guidance system, you're either going to get the higher level opportunities you can't see yeah. or you're going to learn the lessons you don't know you're meant to learn yet. Right. <laughs> so it, you, you win either way. And, uh, yeah. and yeah. a lot of people want more of the, uh, they, they want more of the high level opportunities and less of the lessons. Yes. But they go hand in hand. It really does. And so putting yourself out there and, um, and, and having that shift inward is, is what I find is the biggest thing you can do um, in, not only in business, but especially in, in collaborations as well. Yeah. Oh, 1 million percent. I totally agree with you because um, I call it the failing forward method. It's like, just stuff it up. Uh, you'll either learn a lesson or it'll be something really successful. But yeah. if you don't try, you'll never know. And you do have to trust yourself because even though they're well-meaning sometimes, I get that, but people will give you advice freely in all sorts of ways. And you have to trust what's right for you and not be worried about what they say. Mm. So tell us some of the... Um, biggest mistakes that you've made along the way, those biggest lessons, would you say? Yeah, I mean, whenever the biggest lessons have always come when I, I recognize I'm operating from a place of fear. Yeah. Whenever you're operating from a place of a fear, lack, scarcity, whatever you call it, there's, there's always a sign, there's always something that says, I need to do this because, and if I don't, I'm going to feel unloved. I'm going to feel unsafe. I'm going to feel not seen, right? There's yeah. always that element. I always ask myself, if I go and try this and it fails completely, what am I going to feel? What's my worst case scenario? Yeah. And if that worst case scenario brings up all this fear and doubt and frustration, then I know I'm operating from fear, right? Yes. Because I'm, I'm doing it so I can feel enough. I'm doing it from an egoic pattern and I'm operating from a place of, you know, my internal five-year-old that says my life needs to look like this. Yeah. I need to be like this in order for me to feel enough, in order for me to feel safe. And whenever yeah. I've operated from that, that space, um, there's definitely been more of the lessons rather than the high level opportunities. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And the lesson that, that they've always been the biggest lessons is when I'm, I'm placing my significance and my importance and my my worthiness on my level of success if this is to succeed or not yeah. um that always comes crashing down i always start to i always develop a deeper uh you know i always transcend deeper patterns um when that happens but it definitely comes from a place of, of fear that needs to be seen needs to be transcended yeah and and look i think that's so true and thank you for sharing that because quite often our imprint years are from zero to seven so quite often we run our life on the, the meaning we've made something way back then. So the map that we've made to survive and thrive in that world, we bring it into now. And quite often, as you say, it, it's just it doesn't work. Yeah. But quite often, and I'm sure you see this too, people get stuck in that pattern of it's too scary, so they don't do it. So they get stuck in that, uh, I tried that once, I'm never going to do it. What keeps you going? Because obviously you've got a great wisdom um, of being able to tap into yourself what keeps um how do you actually let me rephrase that how did you get to that stage because you're quite a young man and so people wait 60 70 years and haven't even got this insight or wisdom mm. yeah i get that all the time so many people are like how old are you are you 16 not 16 <laughs> turn, turn 31 this year um Yay. but the yeah and they, they're always asking like where does this come from? You know, yeah. I've, I've been called an old soul more times than I can count. Um, but in my, in my opinion, it really just comes down. I've meditating in silence has, is where all this comes from. And it's, right. and, and it's where I start to see the, the gifts that flow through me uh, flow through anyone who sits in silence in stillness. I can guarantee it. Anyone who sits in silence and deepens their level of surrender, deepens their level of allowing in terms of all thoughts, all emotions, anything that comes up. If you just sit there, it'll transcend. And then what flows from that is always higher guidance, creative ideas, more love, more passion, more peace. 
It really does. And therefore, when you operate from that place, to answer your question, you, I can go forward and create something with complete non-attachment to what happens yeah. next. It's not 100% of the time. Like right? we, we all still have an ego. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all still have an ego that creeps in every now and then and the ego isn't bad the ego is just unconscious. no it, get, it gets a bad rap sometimes but it's not a bad self yeah, at all <laughs> totally but yeah it's it's important what you realize what you said before in terms of from ages zero to seven you know we develop these patterns yeah. that uh that you know are sort of like the blueprint of what we think life needs to be like yeah and what i found of coaching hundreds of business owners is that that you know zero to those patterns from zero to seven are building your business literally yeah right yeah. And those those patterns of what i call your internal five-year-old are running those are running the show trying to build the business uh, to feel enough absolutely yeah 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 and it's it's quite scary sometimes when you do uncover those patterns and you go holy moly what have i been thinking it's like somebody's giving you the map to telling you you're going to France to see the Eiffel Tower, but give me the map of Ireland, for example. It's like, you just can't, you can't follow it. Mm. Yeah, it's awesome. So obviously meditation is a big thing for you. And I appreciate that. I wanted those people that have gone two hours. Oh, can I? <laughs> but I'm, that's one of your success habits. What are your other success habits that keep you motivated to keep going? Yeah, to keep going is is definitely ask yourself the question of how may i serve every single morning if you're in the state of service uh some days it's it's more challenging to get there than others but if you if that's your default if your default is like look how do i serve how do i serve at high levels yeah then your mind's your mind's always going to go to resourceful answers and your heart's going to be in it because that's who and what we are who and what we yeah. are we are here to serve. We are here to make a difference. We are here to go through our fears and learn the lessons with the deeper gifts of how we can contribute. And if, if you wake up every morning and although you're feeling all this doubt and this fear and whatever, and you sit in silence and you're like, holy shit, this is going crazy. At the end of it, if you say, if you sit in meditation and deepen your level of surrender and then ask, how may I serve? You'll always get insightful ideas. You'll always get yeah. an answer that says, go do this, create this, create this Facebook group, do this video, uh, contact this person, right? Collaborate here. And I think that's the space of service that you can, you, you'll always thrive because uh, that's who and what we are. And we're not, we're not going against the grain and trying to do something yeah. that, you know, trying to force life. You're going with life because yeah. life, life has a flow to it. And if you're trying to force something because you're trying to, hard work and hustle against who and what you are, you will always, uh, you will always struggle. You know, even when you succeed, you still struggle because you'll need yes. to maintain that success in order to feel enough. Yes. But if you're in that flow, I mean, that to me is, is where you'll always have resourceful creative ideas for your business. And if you bring that into some collaborations, then, you know, you, you, your best self will just be running the show for sure. Yeah, great tip to ask how my I serve. And you're right, like I often say that there is no, we're not getting a trophy at the end of this, what are you rushing for? And a very good mentor of mine says, you know, move at the speed of grace, uh, whatever way it's supposed to show up. But in this busy humdrum life, I know it's quite challenging for people to do that. And they get stuck in that feedback cycle of, no, I'm afraid to do that. No, no, no. And, and it's so hard to see sometimes because sometimes you start to recognize the patterns of how people are being and how they're taught to be even more than that what was one of the hardest decisions that you've ever had to make in business uh hardest decisions i mean sitting in silence seriously it yeah. was when i realized I'll, I'll give you i'll give you an example the the moment i started meditating was when all clients dried up. Uh, a couple clients I had through crazy circumstances had to get refunds. And I found myself basically back to zero. What I felt right. like was back to zero. Yeah. And it was, I had to just observe my life falling apart, what it felt like, my whole business falling apart. I'm like, man, what the hell is going on here? You know, we, I'm not sure who's, who's watching, but if you've had a time when your external circumstances are falling apart, 
and you just there watching it being like what the hell do i do yeah um that's that's the situation i was in and i decided to sit in this chair and i actually meditated for six hours in one day wow that, wow you know, that to me was the biggest it was it was the toughest thing that i ever did and the reason being yeah. is because i sat in silence and i had this pattern that said you can't sit here you have to go work yes, you have to yes. go do something you have to go uh you know you're being irresponsible you're you you have to go make income generating activities you have to go and yeah. do all this stuff and what i realized was that was my identity my identity like who i was is what i do yeah and that's the exact pattern i needed to shift that's the exact pattern i needed to sit down in silence and 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 see because if i took action from that place i would still be taking action from this 5 year old that i didn't want to see yeah so that was the biggest it was it was such a tough decision i had so much sadness come up and uncertainty and fear like stuff about past relationships i had no clue about um but it was it was the most liberating thing when i was able to just see all the patterns from a place of non-judgment non yeah. and, and non-resistance and just allow it to be there everything shifted for me yeah I, i'm blown away by six arrows i have to say and and i do meditate but i do get that mind sometimes get up you need to do stuff you need to hustle you need to do this and i'm sure a lot of other people do so what kept you sitting there like in that moment how did you know to stay sitting there for six hours well that's the that's the thing i i i started realizing the harder this is to do is the more reason why i need to do it because yeah. when i was sitting down actually sitting there and having the pattern come up of you need to do this was the very pattern i needed to see yes because so the harder it was to sit down in stillness the more i knew i needed to do it right yeah 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 that's that was that's what just kept going kept going in my mind i'm like the more i have this pull that says you can't do this you have to go work you have to go make money you have to go be this successful person yeah uh, the more i just allowed it to be there and after a few hours i just reached this deep level of just peace absolute peace no matter what i was okay with going broke i was okay with losing everything I was okay if I needed to move back in with my mum, you know. I yeah. I was I was now okay with everything and I felt just as much peace, just as much love and I felt just as worthy regardless of what happened in my external circumstances yes. or my following or my bank account whatever. And that's how yeah. I knew that um that this sort of this sort of practice this sort of meditation was was worthy. It was it was yeah. it was healing me from the inside out and that's what showed up in my business and that's that to be honest is what you see in my content in the serving circle and and everything is is what shows through because of that yeah and you meditate now 2 hours a day 2 okay. hours a day in silence um i'm starting to shift it up a little bit cuz i did 12 months of meditating uh for 2 hours in silence but as with everything uh what becomes what is generally your expansion can often become a a pattern of security and a pattern of yes. safety so i'm always looking to shift in terms of what's my next expansion um and so yeah i'm looking to shift and and looking to do some new things i'm still experimenting here and there but i still do a lot of meditating in silence because it's still it's still offering a lot of in my expansion but open i'm open for everything yeah awesome so with all of that what are you finding different in your business like i know that it's different and you've got more of an audience and things are successful but how what could i say how could you measure now the difference in your business to what it was before this breakthrough um well i can obviously i can measure the the amount of clients and the and the income and things like yeah. that I, like i I launched um program a few months ago and and filled it up in in a couple of weeks right. and um that's because of the connections and stuff that I have yes. um but you know in just the creativity and being able to operate in the business where I'm just not attached to the outcomes yeah. um there's a real big this is what I'm I'm big on is is coupling spirituality with business strategy yes. or coupling you know non action with action and finding that balance of what's in your expansion. So nowadays I I'm I get a lot done 
as people see in all, all the content and things like this, yeah. I, I, I do a lot of stuff, but it actually doesn't take a lot of energy. Um, so I'm, I'm both relaxed and very productive at the same time. Yeah. So I've sort of mastered that, that area. And so being, uh, being able to work, you know, in flow and work aligned and be very resourceful, be very creative um, and doing everything I can to meet my goals while simultaneously not being attached to the outcome. Yeah. It's been a very, very big difference. It's, uh, it's offered a lot of creativity, but also a lot of peace at the same yeah. time. It's really cool. I'm sure if you could put that as a mixture into a bottle, you'd be a very rich man. <laughs> I'm working <laughs> on it. I'm, wor I'm working yeah. on it. That's it. So with the collaboration, so tell me about collaboration and how you approach it. Because I know in one of the um, calls we were on, you were sharing, like, for example, how you approach people rather than the sell, sell, sell or come over to my group. There's a unique way that you approach people that actually inspires more collaboration. How is that? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll share a bit of a story with how I started this. Well, I met, I was just networking on online on, I think it was LinkedIn. And I came across this guy, Johan Nagera, who lives here in Melbourne. And I got on the phone with him just for a quick chat. I said, Hey, do you want to have a quick chat? Whatever. And he was such a cool guy. He was very, very successful. He had an immense network. Um, it was, it was, he was a very, very genuine and, uh, and, and caring guy. And I'm like, man, he's so cool. I'm like, I basically reached out to him and I said, who can I send you away that would be an ideal client or a key source of collaboration? And from then, everyone I had met who was high profile, who's also had million dollar businesses or big followings or was doing some awesome, incredible things. I connected them with Johan and it connected him, connected them with him in the, in, um, you know, the, the next few weeks, the next couple of months, things like that. And I had sent him, you know, five, six, seven, I think maybe 10 uh, over time. And they were such high caliber people that got along with him that he reached out and said, Hey, you've added this to my network. I'm going to give you a free uh, ticket to my event. That's a two day event, a thousand dollar ticket. It's like, I'm going to yes. give that, I'm going to give that to you to, to come to my event. And I did. And uh, I went to the, I went to the event here in Melbourne and there were 12 speakers across two days. So my objective was to meet all of those speakers and ask them the exact same question. Right. Uh, who can I send you away? That would be an ideal client or a key source of collaboration and simply just found myself. And that's why I'm branded now as the super connector, because I literally just started networking with people, just sending them each other's way and adding value there. And from that, my network started building, my network started yeah. growing to a point where I just started loving it. And, and I was getting a lot of connections sent my way. And from there, I was able to organize collaborations, referrals, service exchanges, all the, all the things that come with networking. Um, and it happened very, very quickly, but it also happened because people could feel where I was coming from. When yeah. I reach out and, I, and I, I genuinely ask the question of how can I help you? Who can I send your way? Um, and completely not be attached to what that might look like, what that might mean, what I might get in return. People can feel that energy and, uh, and you know, and, and it's from there where you can just back it up and actually do it. And yeah. uh, you'll find your business grow very, very quickly just as a byproduct of being of service there. Yeah. Awesome. I love that because I remember you saying that elsewhere and I thought, that's so cool. Um, and I know people are going to be asking, so obviously we're doing it live, but sometimes the comments come in later, that people will be asking that, that's okay to do that, but how do you remember the connectors? So you've talked to somebody yesterday and you think they'd be a good connection over there. How do you remember to keep up with all that if you're meeting so many people? Uh, you just have to remember. No, no, you don't. You, you uh I, I actually, when I meet someone, I get on a Zoom call, it'll be 10, 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour. I get to know them, what they're all about. And when I do, I keep, the, I keep it as a record in an Excel spreadsheet. So now I've got an Excel spreadsheet of like hundreds of people that I've networked with in the last year, year or two. And now when I meet someone, I say, oh, what is it that you do? Who can I connect you with? 
I can easily scroll through that uh, that Excel spreadsheet and get a gut feel on who I can who I can connect them with. And you know, I don't do too much of that these days because now I started to leverage it. Where now I'm doing the collaborative calls and I'm doing things in the serving circle where people come together and start yes. doing that uh, in a more leveraged way. And that's how I you know add more value to people. Um, but it, it's 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 it takes a little bit of commitment, a little bit of work to actually, yeah. um, you know, keep track of people, keep track of who they're looking to connect with and, uh, and, and actually do that. But the, the benefits are so cool because you're coming from a real place of service yeah. and, uh, and, and they can see that they can feel it for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Because I know like that people say, yeah, I understand the concept, but how do I do it? And that's quite often what's missing is the how to, so what is the best advice? And I have an inkling as to what it would be, but for somebody that's either starting out or they're in business and stuck at a, a certain point, what's the best kind of advice that you would give them? Well, it depends what point they're stuck at. That's, yeah. that's the, uh, yeah. you know, but in, in general, I mean, there, there are a couple aspects. If, let's let's push the 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 meditation mindset aside because i've already already honed in yeah. on that and people can people can feel that's where that's where my real passion is because anyone who's studied business knows that 80 to 90 percent of your business success is your psychology yes 100 um, let's uh but let's say push that aside if they're starting out in business they're they're stuck at some level always defaulting to how may i serve and that can come from just Asking your asking your network, asking your ideal clients, asking uh, you know your community, finding those finding those problems that people need solving, and find creative ways to solve it. Add that yeah. add that much more value, and and be in a space of service where you're adding value that no one else is adding, and you're just creating with adding it time and time and time again, and yeah. that's the basis of business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, you, you speak what I, I talk a lot about who is it that you're talking to. And the biggest illusion is, oh, but if I talk to just one person, I'll exclude everyone else. I go, no, no, no. Don't you yeah. get it? You'll get clearer here and you'll talk to them with 10 problems. And it's like a, a target. If you're like the outer circle will have five and so on. So it actually opens it up more. So and it's actually really easy in Google, etc., to find out what people are searching for already. I call it their, their urgency gateway. What are they actually searching to solve? Yeah. And I love bringing in that creativity to do it. So look, I can't believe we've been talking for uh, almost half an hour already. This has been awesome. So if people want to contact with you, to you or connect with you uh, or collaborate with you, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, well, if you want to experience uh, the serving circle, if you're not already in it, then that's uh, that's always a good way to to do that. I think in, in in Facebook groups you can just type in the serving the serving circle serving circle serving yeah. circle yeah and people can jump in there and start collaborating with some cool people and uh, yeah you can reach out to me on Facebook there and um, introduce yourself and and let me know how I can help and who you're looking to connect with and uh, I can search through my network and and connect with a few people. Um, but that's really the uh, that's really where people connect with most with me is on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but you can also learn a lot about me as well on the podcast. I have a podcast called the uh, Awaken Your Business podcast. So Lovely. awaken awaken your business, and um, yeah, I've got a lot of episodes on there that's to do with a lot of this stuff where I've come from. Do some live coaching, some interviews, that sort of thing. So yeah, uh, that's Amazing. generally where people find me. Awesome. And who best can I send your way as an ideal client or a possible collaboration? Yeah, I'm loving collaborations at the moment. Similar to this, I love uh, doing interviews. I love, um, you know, anyone who has an audience that's a business audience or a spirituality audience. Uh, yeah. I always love doing interviews and, and organizing different collaborations of what we can do together to grow our businesses and, uh, and add more value out in the world. So that's who I love. I love connecting with um, I'm awesome. my, in my network, I've got a lot of podcast hosts and people who have YouTube channels and stuff like that. So connecting those sort of people has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will keep that in mind because I do have a lot of contacts with people who are speakers and are in business and 
all of that. So I'm sure they would love to either be interviewed by you or perhaps um, interview you as well. Awesome. So Tyson, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate the insights you've given us today and I've certainly learned more about you. So I look forward to showing up at your calls every Wednesday morning and um, collaborating a little bit more. Totally. Thanks for having me awesome. and thanks for being part of the Serving Circle. I really appreciate it. My absolute pleasure. Okay, so it's bye for me.